Senator, uh, Senator Hassan, uh, you're recognized for your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thanks to all of the witnesses for being here today. Uh, I especially want to take a moment to acknowledge the heroism of the officers of the U.S. Capitol Police, law enforcement, and other employees of the Capitol who bravely worked to protect our democracy on January 6th and who have done so much work to restore our capital since that day. I also want to thank all of the families of our law enforcement and uh, Capitol Hill staff uh, for what they went through watching this unfold in real time. I want to start with a question to uh, Chief Conti, if I could. Uh, Chief, Washington, D.C. is obviously no stranger to large assemblies and protests. So what is the standard pro process for protests in Washington, D.C. when it comes to interagency coordination and information sharing? And following the events of January 6, what recommendations do you have for improving coordination and information sharing? Thank you for that question. Uh, there are several uh, dis discussions, uh, meetings that take place between the municipal police department as well as our federal uh, partners. Uh, we oftentimes uh, have coordination calls with the National uh, Park Service, uh, simply because in a lot of the federal lands, they authorize the permits uh, for, the, for the federal land. So there's coordination uh, that has to happen there between the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, U.S. Park Police, U.S. Capitol Police, uh, U.S. Secret Service. Uh, with respect to the intelligence, again, you know, our partners from uh, the FBI, they're often uh, part of those, uh, part of those discussions. Uh, I think uh, that the thing kind of going forward that uh, certainly needs to be looked at uh, with respect to uh, specific intelligence uh, has been outlined uh, throughout some of the testimony uh, today uh, when there is uh, specific information uh, that warrants us to perhaps posture uh, differently, uh, our notification system uh, needs to be uh, different. Uh, the JTTF distribution list that we have is not something that is a, a monitored list uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week that would generate an immediate response uh, to that. Uh, when those uh, communications are sent out, uh, there are staff members who at some point will, will, will get to that information. But I think that, uh, as, again, that, that has been laid out. You know, when we're talking about something uh, of this magnitude that could potentially happen and ultimately did happen in our city, uh, it should posture us to move differently. Uh, perhaps with uh, convening phone calls, you know, immediately and not, you know, counting on, on an email or something, making it through the chain through the, to the levels that it needs to make, you know, for other decisions to be made. Well, thank you for that answer. Uh, one of the things I would observe is sometimes uh, ahead of events like these, just scheduling ongoing uh, check-ins uh, with leadership at all of the agencies that need to coordinate uh, can have the effect of sharing information in real time. Uh, I want to move to a question uh, to Mr. Stanger, Mr. Irving, and uh, Mr. Sun. The Secretary of Homeland Security has the authority to designate events with national and international significance as national special security events. But that didn't happen for January 6, even given the threat information readily available ahead of time. Designated events are eligible for expanded federal support related to the security of the events. So prior to January 6, did anyone from the Department of Homeland Security contact you about a potential national special security event designation? And we'll start with you, Mr. Sund, and then move to the others. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, no, I'm not aware of anybody from uh, DHS reaching out uh, and requesting, you know, that if we want to follow up, if this wanted to be a national special security event, uh, or if we were going to request that to be, or if they were going to um, identify and designate what they call a SEER, a special event right. rating, uh, to the event. No, I'm not aware. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stenger and Mr. Irving. Uh, no, no one uh, contacted me. Thank you. And the same with me, Senator. No contact uh, with me or my office. Well, thank you for those answers. I look forward to following up with the Department of Homeland Security about this during the next hearing on this topic. Um, Mr. Sund, um, my last question. The officers of the Capitol Police work each and every day to keep the U.S. Capitol safe and secure. We are all grateful for the brave work of the U.S. Capitol Police officers on January 6th. 
Tragically, the law enforcement community has now lost two officers to suicide since January 6 as a result of the insurrection and the events then. My thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all of us here today, are with the families of MPD officer Jeffrey Smith and U.S. Capitol Police officer Howard Liebengood. Mr. Sund, what mental health resources are currently available to the United States Capitol Police officers, and are these resources sufficient? Uh, the, the department has brought in significant mental health resources, and I certainly do appreciate uh, your recognition of that. Uh, I've talked to a number of officers who have definitely gone through uh, the battle and feel the, the, that they're feeling a lot of trauma from it. Uh, but I know the chief of police, the acting chief, has brought in significant resources. We had uh, the employee assistance program, but they brought in a number of outside uh, contractors uh, that have very, that have gotten very good response. So I think there's uh, a lot of uh, mental health resources available, and I know a number of officers are taking advantage of it, which I'm happy to see. Well, so am I, and I, I would encourage all officers who uh, feel that they could benefit from um, counseling uh, to, to reach out for it, and I would um, certainly encourage, and I'm sure my colleagues here would too, uh, that all uh, leadership in law enforcement uh, reach out to us if they feel the resources are strained or, or need bolstering in some way. Uh, thank you all for your service. Thank you very much for your testimony and for being here today. Uh, to the chair and ranking members of our respective committees, uh, thank you so much for organizing this hearing.